Greetings my friends and welcome to Easy Beads Pandora Find. I want to start by saying thank you for the support you've given me. This is my fifth year on YouTube and I was just uh, glancing through the numbers and realized that it was October 2013 and it was a beading video that was my very first one. So I thought it was kind of a neat thing to uh, do that on my five year anniversary and that's why I'm bringing you beads today. Uh, I hope you enjoy this. You know, it's going to give you a lot of ideas for what you want to do. Uh, it is translucent cane, and I didn't build the cane on camera, uh, and I hope you're not disappointed with that. Uh, but I do a lot of translucent caning. I teach it all over the U.S., and I'll be making more videos all year about that. Uh, so uh, you can use any cane that you have on hand in the meantime, and I uh, use these bead techniques to make some really easy, pretty things. Uh, thanks again for all that you do for me. Thanks for watching my videos. Thanks for visiting my store, tinypandora.com. And uh, I hope that you get something out of this. I've left a little bit of extra detail in this time because I have had some complaints that uh, I over uh, edit the videos. So this one's got a little bit more in it. You can always fast forward. And um, I think that you'll find a couple things to learn that you hadn't seen before. So enjoy and thanks again. We'll begin today with uh, this little translucent cane. That's uh, ultramarine blue, uh, peacock, and uh, white translucent. And I'm going to apply it to that little uh, log that I've made of, of translucent for a base. It's one and a half inches long, and that little base is one and a half inches around. And so, you know, that's all you need to know about making a tube bead. You just want to make sure that the cane that you want to put on it is going to fit. You're better off with it slightly short or just touching rather than having it overlap. Uh, you need to trim it because if it overlaps it uh, doesn't work as well. So I like to just close them up gently and make sure that it's smooth and that it's on there without any bubbles between the uh, little cane slice and the core. And we'll be talking more about these cores. You know, uh, if I put this on white, which I'll show you, it's a completely different look than if I put it on a translucent core. I'm just smoothing this out with my cane bender. I'm just making sure that I can't feel the seam anymore. Anyway, uh, as, t as this video goes on, you'll see uh, how different this translucent cane looks on a white background. And that's key to your design. Uh, you're going to really want to see what kind of background you want under any kind of translucent cane. All right, so I just cut that off, make sure it's kind of cleaned up. And I'll uh, just pinch the edges of these down a little bit. <clears throat> you can leave them just straight like that if you want to. They look, they still look good. I just kind of like to um, make them a little more uh, rounded on the edge. And then I'm going to pierce it. These bead pins are just incredible. These are Amico bead pins. And uh, I got them online. I think they were about $8. And it was actually Ginger Davis Almond that mentioned it on Blue Bottle Tree. I'll give you a uh, link to Blue Bottle Tree because she's always telling us neat things. And, you know, I've been making beads, you know, for a long time and I didn't even realize it, how much better it works when you have something good to pierce them with. But, you know, in the meantime, if you don't have any of these just right now, uh, you can take some hanger wire and uh, just sharpen the edge of it if you want to, sharpen the ends. I've got some over here. I, You know, it's not even that easy anymore to get a wire hanger. So, you know, they're kind of like getting to be like a <clears throat> rare. But anyway, so I've got still got this and I want to make this square now because I want to show you how to make a spotted bead. So I'm going to take my uh, square pairs, my little ones, and make it square real quickly. You know, it can be kind of hard to uh, pinch up the corners on a round cane, whether it's, you know, a complex cane or just a piece of uh, translucent like this, it can kind of be hard to get a hold of it to make it square. So that's why I use these things. And that's why I uh, thought them up, really, it was just so it would make <clears throat> round to square a little bit easier for us. When you do this to a, a finished cane, it's really neat because then you can join the sides, you know, you can um, put the sides up against each other and make a new pattern with that. When a cane's round, you know, you can't really match it up very well. It's harder to make veneers and stuff. So 
That's why there's three sizes of the uh, square pairs so that you can be working with bigger cane if you want to. So that's probably square enough for what we're doing. And now we'll put our spots on. So I've got six sides there. By the, when I cut that into a cube, I'll have six sides. And I'm going to take a uh, cane, the same size as, <clears throat> as my core, and just cut some slices out of it to make my bead. So those do have to kind of match up. Or if you want to leave negative space, you know, you could put it on a larger core too. But this one we're going to go ahead and close all the seams and make it solid. I'll take six thin slices and you know if they mash down a little bit when you're cutting them you can kind of stretch them, square them back up a little bit and stick them on there. So you just put it on all the sides and you also don't want much overlap there. You want to just kind of pinch them shut, smooth them out with your uh, with your rod. Make sure it's to your liking and uh, then I'm just going to soften up the corners a little bit and roll it up. I never roll things up on camera because it makes me vertigo out when people do that. It, gives, it makes me nauseous, so I don't roll stuff on camera. Okay, so here's um, that same uh, bullseye cane that I've been using. And this is four pieces just smashed into kind of a petal shape. I just put them back together. Because I just wanted something a little more broken up to put on my bead core. And you can do that with your scrap. You know, they all look cool. Now I can mess with it. I can reshape it. You know, you can make them look however you want them to. And you'll really have fun doing that. I can do that for hours. This one's big enough for two beads. And uh, I'll do it like that. Cut it in half. So I'm leaving them kind of twisty with some texture to them. You can smooth it out if you want to. That's kind of a different looking bead than what we're making. I'm making these kind of uh, faux, uh, you know, lamp work, glassy kind of looking ones. Now this is neat. This is going to really show you what I'm talking about with regard to um, using a white core. So this is just a number one sheet stacked up four thicknesses. And when I put uh, thin sheets of the translucent cane on this, you just get a completely different look. It's more of a, looks like glassware, like china. Um, and it gives a completely different contrast to the pattern that's on the translucent cane. So you need a couple thin slices. When you're cutting thin like this, set your blade and take your time setting your blade. And if you do that, your slices will come out better. Feel really confident when you, uh, you know, that your blade's in the right position before you push it down. So when these are cooked up, and, and even now, um, you see the difference between the way cane looks on, a, you know, on a translucent background and how it looks on a white background. In the end design, it's, it's quite a difference. For this one, I'm just going to cut through it, make a little, uh, kind of a little buttony shaped bead. If you don't like the edges being white, you know, you can put mica powder on them or you can even put a strip of cane on there if you want to. I, I don't mind the white showing in this. I, I think it's kind of pretty that way. Now there's that one. I'll use that scrap and make another bead with it. And I'm going to pierce this much the same way. You just, you know, want to go in each end gently. And you'll end up with, <coughs> excuse me, you'll end up with uh, nice um, holes that aren't ragged and you won't smash it too much. Um, this is really a fun thing that you might want to do. It makes really, really cool looking um, kind of faux glass beads. So this is just some scrap from that, um, that uh, bullseye I've been using. It looks a little greener in this shot just because of the light, but it's just that same one with the peacock and the translucent in it. You could make this the whole length of the pin if you wanted to. 
I usually cut them off, do a couple at a time, but you know, uh, you can cut them apart later. You can cut them flush on the edges like this one, you know. That one I smoothed down, I rolled it afterwards. This one I'm going to leave, you know, like this with the, with the more texture to it because I like to do it both ways and you'll see in the end result how that looks. So that's easy. You can make piles of them and they really look cool on your piece. So there's a bunch, you know, that, that I've got so far. I'm going to make some more. I'm going to cut out some uh, like little focals and things, um, you know, from the, the uh, remaining cane that I've got and put them on this rack. We'll talk more about this rack later, but I just made it out of uh, some Sculpey um, clay that's really nice and hard. So these are all baked up now. And I'm filling them to make sure that they don't need to be sanded. But I know they don't need to be sanded because um, I smooth them out beforehand. I just take the pad of my finger and smooth everything out before I bake it. And we won't have to buff them or sand them. But if, you know, if it's rough, you should sand it a little bit. Um, the Deep Shine, which I'm using now from tinypandora.com, is uh, great to replace buffing. But, you know, if something needs to be sanded, you still need to do that. Anyway, this doesn't, so I'm putting it on there. It's brush on, so you don't have to worry about, uh, you know, dipping it or, or, or uh, you know, getting it on there another way. If you see any little bubbles or anything, you can just brush them out. You get a shine that looks, it, even after it's uh, cured, it looks like that. So I'm putting my deep shine on and I'm going to put it in that light for five minutes. And I'm going to put it, I'm going to use that rack we were talking about. It's super sculpy. And boy, it is brick, brick hard. So it lasts you a long time if you make something like a rack with it. Uh, that light, if you press the black button forward, it just stays on. If you press the black button toward the back, um, and hit the red button it just goes on for 120 seconds so that's something you want to know so see this thing I put what I did when I built it was I put a stopper on the outside of that so that the pin won't go all the way through and then I didn't put a stopper on this end and that way I can slide it in see I'm just you put you know you put all the pins in I just put one in and now it fits in the light see but then if you want to use it in the oven, you could slide that bottom part back out. So that's what that's about. So here they all are with their Deep Shine Brush on UV Finish, which I am very proud of. And I always want to talk about it because um, I'm not a person that can handle a lot of buffing. It hurts my hands. Um, I, you know, I always dread it. I don't like the dust of it and stuff. So I just want to tell you about, about my Deep Shine. Um, and that's one that's on... A translucent back and look at the difference between the heart and that and that uh, moon shape and that's all the difference of those is the fact that one's on a white background that's a translucent um, base also and then you see the ones over there on the white base and you know the contrast between the two so be thinking about that when you're building your piece you know, what am I going to do with that? You want to put all the white ones together? You want to put all the translucent ones together? You want to mix them? Or you want to just make them all one way, the way that you like best? But I made both. And then all those greenish ones are all on translucent bases. And then these are just scrap that was laying on the table when I got done. So I just grab a little white and, you know, kind of twist them up together. I put eye screws in these before I baked them so that they'd be easy to dangle. Or I could put it on both ends so that I could use them for connectors. And it was just way fun. So I spent actually several days just, you know, I just put everything aside and made beads because it's just so much fun. To me, that's just the whole point of this is to take your time and have fun. I'd love to see this in the colors that you like best. I guess for most people, this would be like beachy, but I like kind of broke looking jewelry so I'll show you what I made with it I made these these are all different ones you could I guess you could wear them all at the same time if you want to but um, these are the pieces that I made out of the beads in this tutorial and those findings are from Joanne which is my favorite 
place for findings. I just think they're prettier than most of the other stores carry. And there's that one. Those flat findings, I just made little flat beads and, you know, glued them on there. So I hope you like this. Thanks for stopping by. See you next time.